Before 1994, we used to play in this gymnasium, but just half of it, and we had a set of wood bleachers that sat about four or 500 people, and a red curtain that went, behind, that went down behind the bench, and that was it. When I played here, it was actually just half the court. It wasn't opened up where you play in the middle. Um, we had bleachers only on one side. We had Norma Carr, who was um, one of the first coaches um, in this program of Utah Volleyball. We had her do uh, honorary first serve uh, as a dedication. It was pretty cool. Our players love Crimson Court. They love playing here. They love the fact that the fans are, are close to them and they give, the fans give our players energy and they feel like queens. When they walk into you know, the Crimson Court, they feel like they're special and this is their place and this is their home. It's amazing. I think it's a great atmosphere. You've got the fans really close um, and so they're loud and it feels exciting. You can feel the fans and you feel you know, the band and everybody else that's involved. The second you walk in the gym, you, you can feel something different. Um, it's nice to play in an environment that's, that really feels like home. I know opposing coaches just, you know, they don't like to play here because, you know, it's a tough environment, but at the same time, it's a pretty fun environment to play in and they understand that too. Because you know home court advantage is a big deal. And Crimson Court, I feel like a lot of people don't like to play there just because the fans are so close to the court. Um, the fans are in their face, and it's just a good feeling knowing that our fans are behind us 100% and um, always gives a little extra excitement to play on our home court. We had a big win over Stanford in 2000. It was a Tuesday night and they had just got ranked number one in the country. I didn't tell my team that they'd gotten ranked number one. Of course, they knew they were highly ranked. We went down two games to nothing. Somehow we found a way to turn it around and, and win in five games, and it was, it was as big as it gets. Um, I remember the first time we beat BYU in my career. I, <clears throat> we hadn't beat them. I didn't beat them for four straight years uh, when I first got here, and I remember in 1995, the first time we beat them, and I remember the last time we beat them, and I think probably everyone in between. It's just special to be able to play in front of that kind of crowd um, at home and to get the win. Yes. Another big match that, that happened here uh, back in 2008. We clinched the Mountain West Conference over our, our Mountain West Conference rival, Colorado State. I think between the two of us, we had won almost every conference championship for about 10 to 12 years. And we beat them on our court. And to be able to celebrate a championship, that's only, might have been the only time we actually were able to celebrate a championship on our home court. We actually cut the net down and we had the hats from the conference and the t-shirts and the trophy. And um, you know, there's a lot of history at Crimson Court and you can't deny that. You know, I think about the band and how loud they are and we actually, I actually asked, you know, we, we said maybe we shouldn't bring quite so many pieces to the band into Crimson Court because it was too loud. Um, and I remember all the fans and I remember where, I know where most of the fans sit. And they sit there year after year after year. And um, it's, it's home for me. I know where they sit. I can look up. I can know that they're there. I know when they're not there. Um, and it's a, it's a comfort level for sure. And, and, and that helps our players play great too when they know that there's so many people behind them every night. The match that we played to, to advance to the Sweet 16, you know, I'll never forget it. Mostly just because all of our alumni were there to be able to share that with us. And it was such a breakthrough for our program. Yes. I don't remember the 300 as much as I remember the 400, probably because that was a big win for us uh, over um, BYU. And we've had a lot of those wins, um, but that one was special. Not only was it over BYU, but it was also an alumni reunion weekend. So we had over 50 alumnus back in town, sitting in the bleachers. And we were also down 2-1 in that match. And we were fending off four match points 
and our team found a way to come back and, and win that match. And I remember, you know, Carolina Barkowiak told me after that she wanted to win that match, you know, and get that milestone. That team took that pride in that. It was amazing. It was seriously, I don't think that you could have scripted anything better. To get her 400th win against BYU, who, you know, any sport, you always want to beat BYU, but, um, and in such a dramatic fashion. And it was, yeah, it was amazing. It was so fun. And we all had the little papers that showed that we were ready for her 400th win, hoping that we'd get to actually, you know, show them and that that was going to happen. And it was awesome. It was great. So we had a we had a nice run there of, of 10 consecutive years going to the NCAA tournament, being ranked in the top 25. It took one year where we didn't go to the NCAA tournament and then went back the following year and made it to the Sweet 16. And so, you know, we've had a good run and we've been ranked as high as eighth in the country. I think we've been ranked in the top 25 12 or 13 years. And now we're on to a new, new adventure in the Pac-12. We're excited about that opportunity to put ourselves against the top teams in the country every single night in the Pac-12 and try to get into that top six or seven and know that we'll be a top 25 team when we do that. My goal from day one was to build a program with a lot of tradition that people could be proud of. And I think that the alumni of this program are proud of, this, of it and that's what matters to me and, and I love them all. I've been through a lot my whole life, but I would have to say that the, the relationships I made out there on the volleyball court are stronger than any other relationships I've made in life, and um, it truly is because it's a family environment. In a team sport, you develop relationships where you trust people, and you get to know them so well, and you spend a lot of time together, and um, it's great when those continue and that you can go on you know, into your adult life and be friends and keep those relationships, and I think that Beth is really good at that, and I think that we have a lot of that within uh, the players and the team. What I love about the tradition and the history of this program, and, and, I, and I am proud of it. You know, you don't put 22 years into something and, and not have pride in it. But what I'm most happy about is my relationships with, with my former players. Um, I love the fact that we keep in touch. I'm always hearing from them uh, and re they're reaching out to me whether we're in a city and that they live now and they want to come watch us play or they're at Crimson Court every weekend watching us play or, you know, they're Facebooking me and want to find out who the new coming players are and in what position they are and what, where they're from. They, the fact that they have so much pride in the program and, and love for it, that's what matters to me.